Hello, thank you for joining the Austin Asian American Film Festival's Prismatic Taiwan series for this virtual screening of the film Outcasts. My name is Josh Martin. I'm a programmer with the uh, AAFF, and uh, we are very excited to be able to present this film, which has been a little seen in uh, the United States since it was uh, released here in the late uh, 80s. Um, the title, uh, I should say, of this film um, was changed uh, when it was released here. When you watch the film, you'll see that the original English title is, in fact, The Outsiders. Uh, when it came out in the U.S., it was um, changed to Outcasts um, on account of the Hollywood film, uh, The Outsiders, that had been released a few years earlier. Uh, you might remember the film with uh, you know, Matt Dillon and Patrick Swayze and Tom Cruise and all of them. Um, both of these uh, films do happen to feature a, uh, a cast of strapping young men, but uh, beyond that, they don't really have anything in common. So we'll just move on past that and uh, get back to uh, Outcasts, the Taiwanese film, uh, which was released in Taiwan in uh, 1986. So that's about 16 years after the, uh, the previous film in our series, The End of the Track. And uh, quite a lot of water had passed under the bridge uh, in that intervening period. Um, as you will see when you uh, watch this film, by 1986, it was possible to depict queer lives, queer characters in a uh, much more direct fashion than, than had been possible at the time uh, the end of the track was made. Um, by 1986, Taiwan was well on its way to uh, democratization, martial law which had been in place in Taiwan since the late 40s, was um, on its way out. It was still there, but it was much less strict than it had been at its height. And within a few years, it would be abolished altogether. Um, there was also a major upsurge in civic movements uh, occurring at this time. Previously, uh, marginalized voices were making themselves heard on behalf of uh, various causes, um, for example, environmentalism, uh, women's rights, labor rights, aboriginal rights and uh, gay rights as well. Uh, just to kind of paint a bigger picture, uh, 1986 was also the year in which a, a young man named uh, Chi Jia Wei held a press conference at a McDonald's in Taipei at which he publicly declared his identity as a gay man. And this um, was uh, a, a major event at the time. Uh, Chi Jia Wei was not known before this. It's simply um, getting up in front of uh, the press, in front of the media, and uh, announcing, I am a gay man, and uh, urging that gay Taiwanese be treated as equal citizens was in and of itself uh, a major breakthrough. Um, at the same time, just to show uh, that things weren't necessarily all rosy, um, within a few months, Chi Jia Wei would uh, uh, attempt to register a same-sex marriage at a notary's office. He would be uh, denied, of course, and within a uh, um, uh, short time after that, he was um, arrested on trumped up charges, fabricated charges, really. Uh, he was illegally detained and imprisoned for about half a year before being pardoned. So there were still, uh, you know, very severe limits um, on expression. And um, I think you'll see when you watch this film that it does uh, perform kind of a balancing act. It's uh, the characters, you know, it does feature unambiguously uh, gay characters, uh, relationships between these characters, including romantic relationships, but um, it still uh, had to make a, a lot of accommodations in order to uh, get through the censors. In fact, the censors demanded uh, about 21 rounds of recutting before they would allow the film to come out in the form uh, that we see it now. Um, I do think besides um, this recutting, uh, a big part of the reason that the film was able to be made is on account of its um, literary pedigree. Um, this film um, is based on a, uh, a novel by the author Bai Shen Yong, or as, as also known as Kenneth Pai. Uh, the novel is um, known in the English translation under the title Crystal Boys. It was um, published um, in the, the early 80s after being uh, serialized in the late 70s. Um, and it was uh, something of a sensation upon publication. Uh, bai Shen Yong was already a uh, very well-known author, a very uh, respected author. He's considered, uh, was and is considered one of the preeminent Chinese language writers of the post-war era or even uh, really of the entire 20th century. Um, so uh, just having that kind of reputation behind the story uh, may have helped smooth its journey uh, to the screen. 
um, the, uh, the the original novel by Bai Shenyong was not uh, strictly autobiographical, but it did uh, draw on his experiences in some ways. You can see um, when you watch the film, for example, that there are multiple characters who have um, military backgrounds. They have fathers who are in the military or affiliated with the military in some way. Uh, the film actually opens with the, the main character being expelled from a military school. Um, that um, could be seen as a reflection of Bai Xin Yong's own uh, background growing up as a, uh, a gay man in the shadow of uh, his father, who was a, a very well-known, uh, very prominent uh, Chinese general who had uh, even served as the Minister of Defense for a period in the late 1940s. So um, I you know, can imagine that was probably not uh, an easy upbringing for him, and I think some of that uh, came out in the story here. Um, this story would have already been familiar to a lot of Taiwanese viewers by the time it came out uh, on, on screens, thanks to the success of uh, the novel. But uh, I, I do also think that uh, an attempt was made to um, a kind of bring this story to um, as broad an audience as possible. Um, this is um, a, uh, there are certainly, you know, experimental flourishes. There's some surreal dream sequences in the film, but I do think it's fair to say that at its most basic level, this is a melodrama. And, um, if, you know, we remember that melodrama is literally, you know, music, uh, plus drama that certainly, uh, fits this film, uh, very well. The soundtrack is loaded with uh, love ballads that are uh, sung by various characters or appear just on the soundtrack at different points. Some of these ballads are actually sung uh, or dubbed by the film's director, uh, Yu Kan Ping, uh, who uh, is a uh, something of a, uh, a very uh, great appreciator of music. Uh, in fact, the film that he made before this, um, a film called Papa Can You Hear Me Sing, which was one of the big uh, hits of Taiwanese cinema um, and the domestic market in the 1980s. Uh, that film was uh, a full-fledged musical. Um, so, um, and I, you can see some of that um, is also kind of in this film as well. This is maybe not quite a musical, but it certainly uh, kind of uh, flirts with the genre uh, at times. In these uh, with these songs that bring a lot of color and a lot of uh, sort of more uh, kind of emotional expression uh, to the story. Um, this story um, has uh, become something of a, an evergreen um, in Chinese speaking societies. It was adapted to a stage play in Hong Kong um, a few years after the film came out. That play has since been performed and revived in uh, various places around the world, including the United States. Um, it was due to be revived in Taiwan uh, this year um, before uh, COVID-19 um, forced uh, kind of the delay or cancellation of those plans. Um, in 2003, uh, the story was also uh, made into a 20-episode uh, uh, television uh, series on Taiwanese public television. That series um, is also known in English as Crystal Boys, and you can watch that online um, if you so desire with English subtitles. It is a, a much more faithful rendition of the novel than this film, um, besides condensing the story into less than two hours and the various censorship related changes. The film uh, also makes some other uh, alterations. The big one being that the novel is a period piece. It's set in the early 1970s, uh, whereas this film is set in uh, what was then the present of uh, the mid 1980s. Um, another change um, uh, was the uh, expansion of the role of the landlady, uh, the character uh, known as Auntie Man in, this, in uh, the film. In the novel, she's a very minor character in the film. She uh, has a much more significant presence. And um, this may have been to add some more uh, comic relief to the story, or it may have been to um, add more of a, a feminine presence to a, a film that is uh, otherwise very much uh, kind of um, male dominated. Although I will say one of the uh, young male characters in the film is in fact played by a woman in drag, uh, which was a very interesting and uh, perhaps uh, somewhat bold uh, choice uh, given the context of the times. Um, so um, if you would like to see something that uh, does have more kind of fidelity to a novel and kind of expands on some of the characters and subplots that you'll see in the film, uh, you can check out that TV series. Um, I also hope 
um, that um, after watching the film, you'll check out um, our interview with uh, Dr. Kelly Xie. Uh, Dr. Xie is, uh, among many other things, a curator of Taiwanese cinema. She programmed this film uh, last year at a Taiwanese film series in Sao Paulo, where she's currently based. And uh, she also, they also brought uh, director Yu Kenping out there for that. And um, in fact, Dr. Xie is a longtime acquaintance um, with uh, director Yu, and um, so uh, in in this interview, she um, can uh, provide some more detail about um, his very long and very interesting career, um, as well as some information uh, about the uh, the film's production and some of the decisions and the uh, the issues that came along with that. So uh, please uh, do check that out uh, after the film. Uh, before I would go, uh, I would like to thank um, all of our uh, co-presenters, the Taiwan Academy of Houston, um, Outreach for Taiwan, uh, Asian Cinevision, the Taiwanese American Citizens League, and uh, the Taiwanese American Film Festival. I'd also like to thank all of our uh, many uh, community partners. And I'd also like to thank some, uh, some other uh, specifically for their help with screening this particular film. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Dr. Shea, of course. I would also like to thank the uh, cinema, uh, the Universidad de Sao Paulo. I apologize if I uh, mangled that pronunciation. Um, they are the, uh, the ones who uh, presented this film uh, last year um, in Brazil. Um, I would also like to thank uh, Tiago Andre with the cinema. Uh, he and Dr. Xie uh, both provided uh, valuable help in uh, sourcing the materials needed to bring this film to our online audience here in the United States. So we are very much in their debt. Um, so uh, I hope that um, everybody uh, enjoys the films and that you en or enjoys the film and that you enjoy all the films that we are uh, bringing to you as part of the Prismatic Taiwan series. Uh, please uh, check us out on uh, social media to find out more about uh, upcoming AAFF events. And um, uh, thank you for watching.